Um, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Juan. I work for uh, Millwall Brown, which is a uh, one of the largest market research companies in in the world, really. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, a little bit of what uh, Millwall Brown does, uh, a little bit about cross media, which is one of our solutions, and hopefully focus more on how R has helped us implement it and where it's how it's impacted our approach to um, our different solutions. So very quickly, uh, Millwall Brown, who we are. Um, like I said, we are one of the biggest uh, market research companies in, in the world. We specialize in brands. Um, if you have ever um, sort of ha had a little dive into market research, you'll find that there's lots of flavors to it. Um, some people will specialize in things like price elasticity or product placement. or um, uh, And we specialize on brands. We are all about trying to help clients grow uh, their brands. We are global. We have offices everywhere, which means that we get data from everywhere. Um, and that in itself is a nightmare that we have to deal with every day. I will show you a little bit, uh, I will talk a little bit more about how that plays into the whole thing in just a little bit. Um, our, our offer is basically centered around four great pillars, which is essentially brand strategy, brand performance, channel uh, optimization, and creative development. What each of those are is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, brand strategy, essentially try to figure out where you want to go with your brand as a, um, as a company. Um, um, brand performance is we help you measure, understand, and get a sense of where you are with your brand. Um, and then, of course, once you have a strategy, once you know where your brand is, the pillars on the right side come into play, right? Because as a marketer, um, the levers you have to play with to push your brand, to make your brand grow, are essentially two. Uh, or there's a few, but the major two ones are you can play with your price somehow for your product, or you can, um, you can work with your marketing efforts. Essentially, how do I need to spend my money um, on my marketing so that I can make my brand, my brand grow and eventually, of course, grow my sales. So the pillars on the right-hand side, creative development and channel optimization, are all about how uh, advertising works. Creative development is where we essentially measure how good a piece of advertising is at achieving a certain objective. Um, I think we've all been there where you've seen an advert that you really love or you really hate, but you have no idea what brand it was for, and that is useful to no one. So um, that, that, is the type of stuff of it, that is the type of insight that we aim to achieve with our creative development offer. Channel optimization is more about the holistic approach to marketing. Campaigns can be very, very complex. Um, there is a, an awesome phrase that basically describes marketing, which is, um, I know that half my money I spend on marketing is wasted. The problem is I don't know which half. So channel optimization is essentially aiming to allow us to understand which half of our marketing budget is being wasted. And the one that isn't, uh, how do we make the most of it? Um, media landscapes can be very complicated. Um, uh, and they're getting more complicated every day. You can invest, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago, it was, it was all about TV and radio, but today the number of what we call touch points has increased massively. You have advertising on, on TV and radio, of course, but the online platform has opened up a vast universe of, of places where advertising can potentially have an impact. So cross-media is essentially the solution we have developed to attack this channel optimi optimization problem. Um, now, when you're talking about marketing um, investment, um, you usually phrase it in terms of the famous ROI, right? So if I spend uh, 10 pounds, um, how much am I getting back in terms of actual sales? Um, and that concept of ROI can usually be split between the long and the short term. Um, if uh, there, there'll be certain campaigns that are focused on letting you know that there is a 10 pound discount on a certain product, and yes, your sales in the short term might go up, but in the end, that really does nothing for your brand. It doesn't really help you establish yourself in, in the minds of the consumer, or as we call it, it doesn't help you grow and, and, and strengthen your brand equity. Brand equity, for anybody that isn't familiar with uh, marketing terms is essentially a very subjective term that um, can broadly be defined as the set of associations that consumers have in their heads about a certain brand. So the long term, when you talk about long term impact of, of marketing efforts, is essentially how our campaign affects brand equity, how our campaign impacts how people perceive and how people feel about our brand. And in the long term, that's what will generate the, um, the big uh, bunch of sales. So, as I mentioned, um, 
cross-media is essentially designed to measure the impact of a certain campaign on brand equity. Um, usually, brand equity is defined through a series of, of, of different factors. Um, you will include that in your survey. I will come back to, to where our data comes from because that is a very important part of market research. Um, if anybody has had any experience with market research uh, and or survey data, you can, uh, you'll hopefully be aware that <laughs> there are a million nuances in market research data that you always need to take into account. So. Um, Cross-media in particular is, uh, again, def uh, designed to help us measure how good a campaign is, uh, help us increase that brand equity. Um, and on top of that, there's a few additional bonuses. When you're talking about a campaign and a, me and a media landscape, you're interested in, yes, the, 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 the R your ROI, um, how your campaign is impacting certain KPIs that you use to measure uh, your brand equity, but on top of that, you want to get a sense of how well you've deployed your campaign? Are you absolutely saturating people with, with your campaign? Are you not getting enough? Are you, um, are you using the, uh, the right media channel? So is everything going into television when you should be spreading it out across radio and online? Or, uh, um, you know, it's those combinations. So the, I guess uh, I'll give you a very quick overview of the type of things that you see with a cross-media uh, solution. I really don't want to dwell on it. I want to get to where R, get, R comes into the picture because I think that's what we're all here for. So um, when we talk about uh, campaigns, um, like I said, you really need to think about it in uh, more holistic terms than ever. Um, 20 years ago, it was all television, very easy. Um, you could focus on it. But today, the landscape is completely diverse and really hard to describe many times. But as we've done more and more of these, and we, as we learn, and given that we are now a 40-year-old company, we have gained, gathered quite a bit of experience, we have started to get um, a pretty decent sense of how the different channel landscape um, works. And we started to come up with some different learnings that we have seen over and over and over again. Now, when it comes to um, some of the other stuff that you get with cross-media, um, you know, one of the important bits is, are you reaching your audience? Are you actually getting and communicating with the people that you are interested in? Um, and cross-media is designed to help us you know, compare what our original expectation is before the campaign goes out. Um, and we provide mid-campaign readings and after the campaign. So as we look at mid-campaign readings, um, are we reaching, are we talking to the people that we are meant to talk? Um, at the end of the campaign, you can do a, a formal evaluation, of course. And then, of course, decide uh, or define how that communication is happening. Are we, are we, seeing, are we reaching out to, a, to an audience that is mostly um, centered around independent media channels, or are we seeing lots of interactions? Are we, are we talking to people that uh, watch a lot of television and spend all day on their phones, meaning that, we could, uh, you know, that there could be a potential synergy effect between our TV efforts and our, and our Twitter, or are we, are we, are we seeing very independent um, effects happening as well? So all of this is something that we can, um, we can describe with a cross-media um, study. Um, the next, uh, I guess, the, 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 key, the key deliverable, the key outcome that we're after with, with cross-media is how is my campaign affecting the KPIs I'm interested in to drive my brand equity? And KPIs can vary from study to study. Um, each, each client will define them according to their strategy. It can be something very simple, just like uh, awareness. Um, are people aware of my brand? Do they know who I am? Um, consideration, which is what we call where you ask people how likely they would be to actually purchase your brand. Uh, and all these KPIs are essentially defined by the client. The, the, the conversation with the client is always key to, to these sort of things because um, if they don't have a specific question, you can do anything you want. It can be very, very clever, but if you get to a result that is useful to no one, then uh, there's, your, there's both halves of your, of your marketing budget being wasted, not just one of them. Uh, I mentioned the, what we know as overexposure, which is what is the level of saturation consumers can take of your campaign? Are you over-investing? Are you absolutely driving them mad to the point where that you might actually get them to re reject your brand because they can't stand your adverts anymore? Or are you just in that, in that sweet spot where um, you're getting the reaction you, you want, you're getting the reach you want, um, and leveraging that, locating those sweet spots can be quite tricky. So cross-media, again, is designed to help us uh, do just that. Um, and of course, when you have very clever analytics behind a solution like this, um, the idea is that we can uh, build simulators, we can provide clients with alternative scenarios for their investment design that will actually help them achieve um, their goals a little bit better. 
Now, we've done a bucket load of these already. And the problem is that um, <laughs> when you're dealing, again, going back to the fact that we are a global company and we are a market research company and the majority of our data is survey-based, when, when you stop and think about how many of these we've done, there is a lot of clever thinking going on behind, behind something like this. And, it, and, and to achieve this sort of volume, it, it sort of speaks of what we have to think about. So a market research solution is usually composed of several elements. The first one is the survey. You have to think about your survey. Um, it, that you need to be very clear about how you're going to ask, what you're going to ask people. And again, going to the whole global versus the new landscape, there's a bunch of new variables that come into play. So your data collection method in places like Europe, United States, more developed markets, um, data collection is usually carried out through online surveys. If you go to more um, sort of emerging marketplaces, um, data collection is still carried in a very much face-to-face -face type of approach. And those differences in data collection can have a massive impact on your data. Um, more than that, each survey has a very complex structure to it. So uh, when you're dealing with market research data, you have to be aware of where something like a missing value in a, in a particular data table comes from. Missing values in a survey-based uh, data set are very specific. They're very, they're, they have a very clear routing process, and they can each be explained very clearly. So capturing all those nuances around uh, how the data was collected, how the difference in the different marketplaces uh, reflects on the data, and the structure of your survey is something that we need to combine then with very clever analytics and modeling um, and statistical techniques that will help us develop all of the outputs and the insights that we aim to achieve with, with cross-media. Um, so enough about uh, Noah Brown and cross-media. Let's get to where R falls into the picture. Um, <laughs> About two and a half years ago, um, Miller Brown decided to rethink the way it approached analytics. Uh, we were very much a very old-fashioned type of market research company, even, even, even though we have a pretty big size, we're, we're a pretty sizable company. Um, and we, had a, uh, we decided to sit down, rethink our framework that we used to define brand equity. I'm not going to get into the framework at all, but the point is that with it, we thought we need a much more powerful analytics capability to be able to automate. We need to be able to automate, we need to be able to produce the metrics that we're going to sell, and we want to make it as cost efficient as possible. So what can we do in terms of um, analytics and software platforms that will allow us to do just that? So um, as any other uh, old fashioned business would do, you go back to your IT guys and say, right, here's my new framework, here's my calculations, here's the metrics I want to produce, uh, go. And they say, okay, uh, I'll get back to you in a couple of years where I figure out what a uh, principal components analysis is. And so uh, evidently a two year timeline was uh, not feasible in the least. So my boss came to me and said, um, right, you know our, can you, how long will it take you to write something like this? And I said, I, I don't know, uh, let me go away, have a, have a stab at it. Um, and two weeks later, I came back with a script, and the script could do everything we wanted. And we thought, all right, we're done. Um, we've got a massive solution, awesome analytics behind it. There's an R script behind it. And we just need a, to formalize the platform where we're going to be doing this, these, these calculations, right? So um, because this was originally the analytics piece for the brand equity solution, we started to sort of think about brand equity analytics solution. And we couldn't think of the last word. So um, my boss just said, just name it Beast. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, we don't really need to think about acronyms. Let's just go with that. And essentially, the Beast was born. And the Beast is essentially a, a very fancy and cool logo name for a platform that has R at its core. The idea is that we want the Miller Brown statistical community to contribute to the analytics of the company. And given that we were an old-fashioned company before that, uh, well, we're still are, but we're uh, evolving, um, it was very difficult to do with, um, with just Excel and SPSS, which was the way that we used to do things. Um, so how did we actually go about uh, developing a sophisticated tool like cross-media? Well, we were very clear from the start that we had to approach, we had to use an agile development approach. Um, when you are aiming to deploy a system globally, um, and when there's so many nuances about how people design their surveys and analytics, you need to be, have a framework that's going to allow you to adapt, evolve, and react to the changing conditions of your data inputs. Um, so 
being able to uh, deliver that using an agile approach was pretty key. Um, into our uh, agile development process, we always look to include refactoring and optimization of our code. Um, I love the analogy that uh, you know, we're, if, if we were think, if we were writing a symphony. Uh, none of us are Mozart, so very few of us can write a masterpiece from the very first draft. So it's always important to be able to go back and rework and rethink your ideas and, and, and re-optimize. So um, agile development allowed us to do just that. With each iteration, we always include some refactoring and some optimization of our code. Um, testing, of course. Um, again, with such a varied uh, array of studies coming in and, and different data situations. Um, you know, it was part of the, it was one of the key elements that we had to learn as statisticians suddenly thrown into the mix of, of developing uh, analytical software for the company. So, um, you know, uh, when, I, when I finished my script, uh, I thought, well, yeah, here we go, we're done. Uh, and they said, what about unit testing and, and regression testing? And I said, well, those terms don't exist. What are you talking about? Um, so I, we, we had to learn that and incorporate that very actively into our development process. And, you know, a very quick sort of timeline of the beast, uh, if I think of the beast as, a, as, a, as, a, as an entity, um, Two and a half years ago, it was a baby. It, we, we wrote a little script for it. We, we wrote a little .NET wrapper for it. Uh, we actually got a PM assigned to the development of the project. And we actually created our first beast package, which was great. And then uh, from that on, the, the, the team started to expand. At the beginning, it was just me and the dot, .NET developer. From then on, we started to expand. We, we, we multiplied the team quite a bit. And in each, each sort of block of time, you see that there's always a, an extension and a refactoring. Uh, one of the things that happened is as the business realized how good R was at doing analytics, the list of requirements and stuff they wanted to add to the beast grew exponentially. So. Um, Again, agile development allowed us to cater for all the new requirements as they were coming in. There is, of course, a massive uh, prioritization scheme and approach to that because if the, the requirements multiply exponentially but the resources only grow linearly, then you have to make some, uh, some concessions. And cross-media itself um, was the uh, I'll say the, the, the result of the first experiment, which was our brand equity analytics piece, which was quite simple from a statistical point of view. Crossmedia really took it to a different level. We were starting to automate statistical techniques that were um, on a completely different level. Um, and, you know, we were actually, it was the first time where we actually combined properly the thinking of a lot of our very uh, high level statisticians and media experts to produce a solution that allowed us to automate. Um, a process from end to end, uh, thus increasing our, our, our efficiencies massively. So just a couple of very quick uh, sort of real case um, scenarios where we identified that a reallocation of some budget from TV to, um, to out of home, out of home is all the billboards that you see outside, <laughs> um, would actually result in a, in a very decent increase in some of the KPIs that our, our clients wanted for the brand equity measures. Um, and the same again with uh, you know how a a, a, a Google funded study for Coke uh, resulted that um, they should take away some of their investment from television into online video so that they could um, uh, get a better reach uh, and talk to the people that they were actually interested in. So um, I've uh, run out of time. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Um, thank you so much.